Hi everyone, this is Kelly from The Truth In Story, and I know this is a different way for me to start out a walkthrough of an Oracle deck, but I have done this in other decks before, and um, this isn't really a numbered deck, and so I, I really wanted to do it this way. Let's just start there. Number one, if you've already watched uh, my live chat uh, for January 20th, I did a full flip through of this, and I am going to do a full flip through here. And at first I was like, oh, well, then I won't even do an actual walkthrough. But not everybody watches live chats, number one, especially back when, you know, you can't even see the chat going on. And number two, uh, I think this is well worth its own focused um Um, its own focused uh, um, video. So the deck that we're going to be looking at is the Shamanic Medicine Oracle cards and this deck is by Barbara Michael John Free and Flavia Kate Peters with the artwork by Yuri Leitch. Now we talked about this in live chat. I wish that the artist name was flat on the front of it. And at first I was ring, ring, ring about it, but I, then I did see it was on the bottom and the top. So I am glad of that. I am, one of my pet peeves about Oracle decks is we are so drawn to a deck because of its imagery. I think it's a vital part of an Oracle deck and I do think that the artist should be front and center on the deck. Um, that's, it would take literally just go down slightly further and say with artwork by Yuri Leitch right here on the front of the, the deck. It's such a small thing. I feel that it's just, it's a pet peeve, so you will hear it multiple times if you watch my walkthroughs. However, I am glad that it at least is front and center on the bo box. So this is a Blue Angel deck. I first saw this deck when Tom Benjamin did a walkthrough of it, I believe back at the beginning of December, perhaps. And it was not available in the United States yet because Blue Angel is an Australian publisher. And so he was able to pick it up through Abe Books. Um, and so, or not, I'm sorry, not Abe Books. That's a used book place through Book Depository. And so I had it on my wish list to wait for when it was available on Amazon in the U.S. And so a couple of days ago, Bella, um, a friend, my friend Bella, told, showed me a couple pictures of the cards saying that I would like this deck. And I'm like, yes, that's on my wish list. So I will put a link to Tom Benjamin's walkthrough. He's not an Oracle person at all. And so for me to have gotten an Oracle deck from him is quite uh, a switcheroo from normal. <laughs> so I'll put a link to his video below. So again, Blue Angel deck. We have the typical Blue Angel box. We have the typical color, and I love this earthy brown that is in here. There's always colors in here. I love that. Those are those little things that just make you happy, just to open up a Blue Angel dot box and see, figure out what color it's going to be. Uh, so I love that. We see some card depiction. It's a 50 card deck. I'm glad that it's 50 cards. There, you know, a lot of times you'll kind of t see like 44. I like a good solid uh, deck, and so 50 is wonderful. Again, it does say right at the top, artwork by Yuri Leitch, so I love that. Um, in the back it says, Shamanic practice acknowledges the presence of spirit, wisdom, and healing energy in all things. Since ancient times, the shaman has realized the medicine within and beyond this world and used this connection for the betterment of all. Now you can access the knowledge, protection, and insight of the shaman's medicine through this beautiful deck. And so uh, that's what we have box. So it's a Blue Angel box. But one of the things you start to get a hint at just from the box, I have quite a few Blue Angel boxes, and most of the time they are completely, you know, laminated on the top. Here you can definitely see the lamination right here, uh, but you can also possibly see that it is matte in other places than this and the edging. And this is where the exciting part came for me about this deck because 
it is a matte deck. I don't think I have another Blue Angel deck that is a matte deck, but the cardstock is A, no borders. Uh, we've been cutting off borders from Blue Angel decks. Not we, I actually haven't, but lots of people do for a very long time. And this has come out with no borders and no laminate. Oh, I mean, I'm sure it's laminate, but it's matte laminate. Oh, yes, be still my heart. The book appears to be a typical uh, Blue Angel guidebook. I will say that decks like this, uh, as in most of their decks, with beautiful images, uh, either a, a title of some sort and then keywords, I don't tend to reference back to Oracle guidebooks very often, unless there's just something about the guidebook that stands out to me. I tend to not to return to these very often, um, but um, we'll take a look at it and see how it goes. Uh, it's copyrights 2018, so it is brand new. And I do love the acknowledgement here to Yuri as an amer amazing visionary artist. You sensed our vision and visions and painted them. Thank you for your gifts and talents. Your hand-painted cards are beautiful. Your attention to detail is mastery indeed. Thank you, brother. Now that's amazing. So see, that's why I have to, I will give great kudos to A, at least somewhere on the box, and that is wonderful. That also tells us that these cards were painted for the stack and not just, um, you know, random images. So that's really um, beautiful. That's good. I love that. We have a list, of course, of the cards here or, you know, to, where to find them, although they are alphabetized. Thank you very much. It makes it much easier when you do want to find it to either be numbered or alphabetized. You'd think that would be a no-brainer, but it actually does occur in which that doesn't happen. Um, we have an introduction here, uh, which I think is wonderful to get an idea uh, what you are looking for. Uh, what you're going to find here, right? So we have an introduction kind of putting you in the middle of a drummers and these kinds of things. Uh, but I quite like uh, to see, okay, how, what do they see as a shaman, right? They're, uh, the word shaman is one that I'm always really uh, hesitant to I use. I do use it. I tend to use shamanic or shamanic-like uh, or shamanic energy. It feels like a shaman, you know, because the, the, the word shaman itself is so powerful. I, I don't think it should be used flippantly, and yet it's, it's hard to not use it to describe that sort of earth um, earth based interconnectedness um, aspects uh, that without using that word so but if you're going to use a deck it's, it's good to see where do the creators come from on uh, what how they view a shaman so they say here a shaman is drawn to nature hears the whispers of spirits in the breeze welcomes the rain delights in the heat of the sun and connects with the nourishment of the earth a shaman embraces each season and rejoices at the the first stirrings of spring, the abundance of summer, the falling leaves of autumn, and the deep dark mystery of winter. Of course, some people don't have those particular seasons and can still feel the call of their own cycles. <laughs> um, the shaman has a kinship with the natural world, other realms, and the spirits that are all around us and all that is alive. Shamanism is not a religion, but a wonderful world of freedom, magic, connection with the physical and spirit worlds. As a healer, a counselor and an ambassador for the spirits of nature, the shaman acts as a guardian of this beloved planet. The indigenous peoples trusted, recognized, and interacted with the spirits of the land, living in accordance with the magical law of nature. The same is true for other indigenous peoples, both past and present. Um, and so you get a little bit of feel that sort of earth-based uh, one. Now, I don't think that you can, there was something I read um, you know, you can sort of start this, uh, access the medicine of the shaman, you know, just with this deck. Now, I, uh, that's a high order for a book this large and for a deck to do. Um, however, if it is a path that you are already on or just one that you, um, really connect with, on, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming you wouldn't purchase this deck if you weren't in some way called to that particular uh, spiritual path. Um, but it's certainly, you know, using these cards isn't going to make you a shaman or teach you everything that you need to know about uh, being a shaman. Uh, so we have that. We talk, it has a thing about spreads, uh, three card spread. Uh, you know, I, I kind of 
thought they'd do something a little bit different than a past, present, and future. I would have thought at the very least, uh, you know, middle world, upper world, and lower world <laughs> spread. Um, just because it is a, a shamanic... Um, Oracle, but that's okay. You can you can get spreads from everywhere, and then it does come uh, uh, with, of course, with the typical uh, black and white image, the title, the keyword, and then uh, you know page and a half uh, that has sort of a description, and then uh, the element of air or the element whatever the card is revealed, uh, other divinatory meanings, and then a something from the, as if the card was speaking in sort of a poem. Uh, you see this kind of format a lot with Blue Angel. So you have that for all of the cards, and I think that will be it. Uh, we talk about the authors here. We have Barbara or Michael John Free, uh, best love and hardest working wisdom keeper, uh, teacher and advocate and protector of the great earth-centered traditions. She's been working with spirits since the age of 12. Her readings combine mediumship, psychic ability, shamanic healing, rebirthing, soul retrieval, past life regression, and rites of passages. Um, then they have uh, Flavia Kate Peters, known as the Fairy Shaman, and has communed effortlessly with the spirits of nature since childhood. Um, she is a Reiki and Reiki and Crystal Master, Angel Therapist, and Spiritual Counselor. Uh, I'm not sure, like which part, you know, if they just kind of did this together, who did what. Um, not sure about that. Uh, and then we have the artist. Yuri Leitch uh, is the highly regarded Glastonbury-based artist known for his mythological, erotic, and fine art creations. Born in Devon, England, of rich Scottish, Welsh, and Irish ancestry. His reverence for all things natural, uh, be it the human form, flora, or fauna, shines through in all his incredible paintings. Yuri's work is rooted in his knowledge and passion of spirit, esoteric symbolism, and world mythology. So uh, that's what we have and a beautiful, beautiful book. We'll come back to this in a moment. So you can see that I have some piles here and that's because while I will do a flip through of everything one by one, um, I did want to kind of show some sections that you'll see here, even though it's not something that's discussed in the book, but in going through them all, uh, some of them are very obvious and some of them I, I had thought, did a little more thinking on. Uh, the ones that are quite obvious, we have the middle world, the uh, lower world and the upper world. So that, of course, is key to any shamanic study, at least any that I've ever done, and certainly key to my practice, is that understanding of the upper world, the middle world, uh, and the lower world. So if you think of the tree, which if you look at this, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but the tree, well, it doesn't line up perfectly, but you have the trunk of the tree here, which is, you know, kind of where you're rooted in, in this world. You have the lower world, which for me, and, and everybody can access these things differently, but for me, this is the realm of ancestors, the realm of animals, guides, and spirits, and that kind of thing down here. And this is where the, the, um, the web is, or the collective unconscious, however you might see that. You know, this is our world as well as the other world. You can kind of step sideways into the other world if you work with fey energy, earth spirits, those kinds of things. And then you have the upper world of the, the heavens and the cosmos, uh, divinity, if you work with divinity, uh, this would be where um, spirit guides and angels, if you work with any, that kind of thing, and the up and above, the cosmos. Now, I, I think Kayla made a good point in a Shakti Shaman in the live chat. It's kind of strange to have a Western uh, astrological wheel on this chart. Uh, or on this card, because shamanism you don't necessarily think of as obviously being rooted in Western esotericism. Um, however, I will say this: there's a lot of different uh, cultures and uh, places in which uh, cultures, 
I think that will just says it all. There's a lot of cultures uh, that are represented here, so I suppose it is good to have a little bit of that Western esoteric uh, represented as well. Uh, I do work with Western astrology, so for me that's nice, and it does reference to the the astro 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 astrological aspects. So. So some people that would resonate, some people not so much, but you can, you know, usually I think get by that with just kind of the idea of the cosmos, the stars, the turning and the cycles of the seasons, uh, the ch moving of the constellations, those types of things. So I don't think that, I think it's, that's okay for me. Again, everybody, what, what works for one isn't going to work for the other. So, of course, so we have this uh, there. I think that's obviously very key to a um, shamanic style deck. Now in terms of art uh, or, or depictions, uh, this one is probably, uh, was at first the most, uh, had the two of the cards I didn't feel fit the rest of the deck as much, which would be these two. Um, this one particularly, however, when I think of air spirits and air sprites uh, in from a uh, fey energy kind of thing, and that is something that I do work with, I do feel like the elements in this deck uh, ve do very much feel um, more on the lines of fey energy, perhaps European, Celtic, this type of a uh, fey um Fey energy, and again, I kind of like that. At first, I was like, eh, not liking this so much. Um, although she does have a bit of a of an Asian flair uh, with the way it's almost like she has a fan uh, of fire uh, with the way that her hands are. It's kind of cool, actually. But um, that's kind of how I felt. Like that, this feels a little bit more Fey, and that's okay because we have a lot of other, uh, again, cultural uh, styles uh, in pulled together. And so I can kind of come to terms with that uh, standing out a little differently and think of an earth sp spirit, an earth sprite, that kind of thing, uh, it's a European sprite. You do have a lot of imagery like this. So I've come to terms with that. But you do have the elements, uh, Western elements, air, fire, earth, and water represented. Then you do have the four... Um, directions represented as well. We have the cute penguins in the south. Uh, we have the birds in, rise in the east and the sun rising in the east. We have, or setting in the, you know, rising in the east, setting in the west. We have the beautiful north card, uh, and then we have the west card uh, with a gorgeous owl coming in. So I love that. So those are real obvious, right? We've got the world tree breakdown, we have the western elements, and we have the um, directions, the four directions. Some other ones that I felt were kind of obvious, uh, we do have the concept, the idea of conception with the tree of life, where the tree of life, normally in a shamanic decks, I think you would see a full tree of life. I do like that this shows the conception of it because within that acorn is both the seed of the tree of life and contains the entirety of the tree of life, much like an ace, right? So I really love that. But we have the conception, uh, we have the birth, and then we have death. Uh, so we do have this beautiful... Um, You know, because then the try and, and it had for death, it has transmigration, so we have that movement on to the next. So we also have that sense of rebirth as well with that death card. So we kind of have that cycle, right, of conception, birth, uh, and death, and then of course that transmigration into the next place, right? So I think you get that a little bit of that cycle of the of. Of incarnation. And then um, the great mystery uh, card I felt kind of goes with these because this whole cycle of life to me is part of the great mystery and kind of trusting in that greater machination of the world in some way. So I had those kind of together in that way. We also have uh, the different um, things and you know, beings that populate the earth. So we have tree people and stone people. We have a uh, four-legged um, creatures of the world. We have insects. 
of the world. There is there is a spider there. Somebody said there's no spider. Well, we do have a spider in the insects. We have sea creatures. We have air creatures with birds, and we have plant creatures. So plants and trees and rocks and and insects and water animals and four-legged animals and birds. So you kind of have all of the the beings right of the world here, uh, which I think is really amazing. So we have that section. Um, we have some smaller, less obvious, and these people could see these differently. These are, to me, places. You go to a sacred site. You go to the lodge for council. You go to the altar. Now, this could actually be a tool, but the altar, to me, is a place that you go, whether that is in the astral world or in the physical world. That is something that you go to. Um, and then going into the cave. Like I just think those are really gorgeous places of going. So we have that. Um, these are more things that you're doing. You're journeying. You're going on a vision quest. You're going in for soul retrieval. You're being buried in earth for this lesson that I could never do in my lifetime because I am very claustrophobic. Um, you go to the you know you go to prayer. You open or you do prayer. You you um, act out prayer, something that you're doing. So these are things that you would be um, doing. They're doing cards. Um, these are kind of being cards. We have sh the shaman, our ancestors, we have the shapeshifter, we have the trickster, and we have the dream weaver. So these are kind of different aspects of being. And then lastly, we have a, you know, a good chunk of the cards that are objects, objects that a shaman uh, might use, right? So bones for casting, uh, the medicine wheel, the medicine bag, rattles, feathers, flutes, bells, drums, staves, uh, our offerings, our masks, our crystals, our shells, our shields. Like these are uh, the objects um, that might be used in the shamanic path. So those are the kind of, uh, you can see, I feel like, um, a great deal of thought has gone into um, covering all these different aspects in a really beautiful way. I haven't been this excited about a, a mass-produced um, oracle deck in a while. Now, the Shaman's Oracle, I definitely was and still am massively in love with. Um, and this will have to be edged in the same way to go with those decks. But this uh, excites me very, very much. So let's zoom in now. I know you've pretty much now already seen all of the cards, but I'm still going to do a quick flip through because, you know, you didn't get to see them up close. So I will try to uh, make this a little bit quicker. Uh, because we have sort of broken these things down. So in the directional cards, we have the beautiful West card, which we have the word purge uh, for the owl. Gorgeous North card. Let's read this one because we haven't read from the guidebook so that we can hear uh, North. So this keyword is solitude. Uh, the time has come to distance yourself from that which seeks to change, mold, and control who you are and what you wish to do with your life. This influence may be another person, an addictive substance, or negative emotion. Contemplate what has got you to this point, and you need to do this on your own. Put some space between yourself and a controlling influence with a detox, a retreat, a sweat lodge, or a holiday alone. When you strip away all of the ifs, buts, and maybes, there will be room for the cause of your challenge to surface. Once those causes emerge, they can be acknowledged and healed. We often think about being alone as a negative. However, solitude is not the same as being lonely. It is a precious state where we can simply think and be. We can choose to use that space to face our shadow self and discover exactly what we need to improve ourselves, our lives, and our relationships. Peacefully being with yourself or actively confronting your shadow, both have merit and you will know which, is, which one is appropriate when you go it alone. In the North Revealed, it says, according to Native American and other Aboriginal peoples, the North represents recuperation, self-reflection, and readjustment. Associated with the element of Earth and the season of winter, North is about personal lessons that can test a physical and emotional boundaries and expose the primal self. Going North can be a major turning point as much as gained 
Um, and much is gained from first-hand experience and achieving something alone without the influence of others. So other divinatory meanings are, you have come so far, don't give up. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. All good things come to, to those who wait. A time of great blessing that may seem disguised right now. You are on the right path. Be patient. Time on your own serves you well. I feel like that's a little bit cliched and trite, to be honest. Um, it's a shamanic deck. We've got bear spirit here. You know, nothing at all is spoken about the bear totem or a bear energy, really. It's, uh, and I know the card is north, but we do have a bear there. I don't know. That just felt like we just put a bunch of guidebook cliches into that little piece here. But when the North speaks, uh, when times are hard, you will survive. You have the knowledge to stay alive. It is within you the courage and will to be alone, stay calm and still. So, you know, it's, it's okay. It has, I like this, that we have a little bit of perhaps why uh, that was revealed. I think that that could be... Um, helpful but I have a feeling this is is really a deck that I may get this card and and the focus may be about north uh maybe about solitude but it also may be bear energy and that's just something that you know you just read intuitively I do like that the keywords are quite small bear to me is about protection I do think of north as winter so you can just kind of roll with this I feel like this is very unobtrusive for just what is that card saying to you in that moment? But you do have this if that's not how you prefer to read uh, cards. Here we have, of course, East for Emergence, the Emerging Sun. We have South for Abundance, which is quite interesting, right? Because you think of the South uh, as um, kind of barren and snow-covered, right? The South in terms of Antarctica, sorry. Not the South. Like the South, you do think of abundance, at least in the United States. Very warmer climate than in the North. And so you definitely think uh, of that. But <laughs> in this picture with penguins, uh, you think, of, I think of not of abundance. However, there's abundance of life, of sea life. It's just not maybe on the surface of the snow. Uh, but then the revealed, it says, many Aboriginal peoples of the world consider the South to represent healing, fulfillment, and passion. The direction is associated with fire and the season of summer. Uh, from the South comes great abundance and rich rewards for efforts made. So, so that I like that. We can see, okay, well, this is why they've chosen to use this particular keyword so I do like that and I wonder with the north let me go back for a minute north now they do winter and earth whereas I see air and winter but this um, this card works very well in terms of air as well you've got all of that sky and the blues and so this works even for the way that I might see the elements associated with the seasons so there we have that. We have water for expression. I'm not going to read through obviously all of these. I just in the in these and now I'm curious. I would assume obviously water for me is spring, but let's see. Water deities, purifying and cleanses. It actually doesn't seem to associate this with a season. I associate water with spring and earth I associate with a fall, uh, which I'm assuming, oh, we already saw that earth they associated with uh, winter. Um, but see, I just, look at how wonderful that is. Um, you have, this to me feels a very much like a, um, an earth, uh, an earth fay, right? It's literally a, a root rooted into the ground of these shoots. I just think it's gorgeous. Uh, here we have fire uh, for passion. Uh, again, in terms of the look of things, I feel like this didn't mesh as much with the rest of the deck. However, it does bring in, to some degrees, a bit of an Asian feel to it. Uh, it also, again, I think just has a very fey energy uh, to, the, to all of the elements. Of course, yeah, we're now onto the elements. So here... Um, yeah, they're not talking so much about 
Uh, they use the seasons more in the directions than in the elements. So here we have fire, and then here we have air. Again, this was the first one, and I was kind of like, eh, this is probably one of my least favorites. It doesn't feel very shamanic, but when you connect it with air, spirits, and sprites, and fey, it works for me because that is something that I do work with. Love the lower world um, as, with the dragon's head here because I do love dragons and I feel like ancestors and uh, animal uh, spirits and guides and things would reside down here and that works. They do have this also as past uh, if you are going to use it that way. But again, I love that that's unobtrusive. Middle world for present, we have obviously our physical realm here. And then as we talked about upper world in the future and up into the heavens and the cosmos here. And that appears to be the moon in the middle, which is kind of cool. I love that as well, that idea of cycles uh, with the moon in the center. I quite like that. Oh, did I even show you the backs? Look at the backs. They're gorgeous. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. This is a symbol for the sun. I was informed in live chat, thankfully. So then this gets to a section that I consider to be sort of items that you might build, create, or use in some way in your practice. We have the medicine shield for protection. We have the, which is obviously, uh, or not obviously, but quite feels to be Native American. Uh, we have the conch shell, which seems to be more like Poly Polynesian uh, cultures with the calling I think that's to me really powerful I got a I got vibrations off of that particular one um, we have crystals for amplification now some people might put this into the category of living beings because people there are many who feel that um, crystals do actually have a their own energy but in more in a, in a sense of a being of this world but we did have rock beings which I think go along with that as well but we have this for amplification, it's a gorgeous card. We have the medicine mask, which is so interesting that with the medicine mask, uh, you can even be more authentic. You can be authentically tapping into the energy that you're tapping into. Uh, we have offerings uh, representing wealth and you know obviously what we're willing to sacrifice and give. We have the staff, which is that foundation that solid lets us solid to the ground. Gandalf, thou so shall not pass as I pass, as I said in live chat, because you know it's a staff. It's a staff, and I did promise. I promised Kayla that I would show you my staff. Uh, this is a staff that I purchased for myself. It has a beautiful knot here as well at a festival, and. My son eventually took it when he was needing, literally needing kind of uh, the, to lean on it for things, and he kind of took it. And of course, um, I gained it back uh, from him. I love the spiral and labyrinth feel of the top. But what I, is so sweet to me now, of course, is that this is, I'm sure, the artist's name, and it looks like Hum, um, or even a, you know, astrological sign with the um as the artist's name but when you just look at it it looks like mum to michael and i and michael called me mum instead of mom and so we always joked that this said mum on here so this is of course very very uh, dear to me so that is my staff and yes i do have one <laughs> um i promised kayla that i would show that so there we have the staff, foundations. We have the drum. You guys have seen my drum. I'm in love with her. Use her a lot for awaken. We have bells for deflection. I was going to look at this one. There were a couple that we thought, oh, let's see, because there was bells and then there were um, the rattle, which was for dispersion. We kind of wanted to see the difference. The bell branch is used for healing, invoking spirits, and to summon the spirit of sacred sites. Forms of the bell branch or spirit chaser use animal bones and sacred trees. Uh, tree branch. It was used to remove negative energy and unwanted intrusions by creating a vibrational gateway to the other words through resonance. So that deflection to me was a weird one, just because if you're talking about invoking, you wouldn't think 
think you'd want to deflect, but it's also used to remove negative energy. Whereas, let me just skip to it here, just because this was one that I, we kind of questioned. Uh, the other one was the rattle, which is for disperse, right? This is deflect. Disperse kind of breaks things up a little bit. So let's just see the rattle. I do love rattles. I also really love... Um, Water, water sticks, rain sticks. Oh, those give me goosebumps. So the rattle says made of ceramic, wood, or stone. Rattles connect us to the spirit world. In Africa, they are used to call spirits. In Mexico and the Caribbean, they are used for divinations. In North America, rattles are used for prayer, ceremony, and journeying. In ancient Egypt, they were used during funeral rituals. Rattles have been used in many archaeological... See, none of that to me speaks to disperse. Give me a shake to clear the way. Send the lower vibes away. Journey into high-pitched sound. Feel spirit move all around. So it's supposed to scatter the illusions of your conscious mind and kind of put you into the state. I guess that's where they're going with that. Again, I'm really happy that the keywords aren't uh, obtrusive. You can really, what does rattle mean to you? What does bowel mean to you? That kind of thing. So that's good. I just wanted to check on what they thought. Here we have the medicine bag for treasure. If you're kind of of the Celtic persuasion, that would also be called a crane bag. I love this medicine wheel. We do have the Native American shield, which we already talked about, but often when you see a medicine wheel, um, it is more of the Native American uh, type. And so I love this uh, kind of the spiral because that is, so that's on some card um, here because that is actually something really important to the labyrinth or the spiral, that kind of energy that's really important for me. I don't know, not for everybody, but, you know, I'm the one who bought it for myself. So I do quite like this. Places of power called medicine wheels are found in diverse forms and shapes across the globe. Uh, the oldest is in Majorville, Canada, and dates back 5,000 years. This medicine wheel tells of the first people emerging as spirits out of the underworld. More than 70 sacred hoops exist in North America alone, most of them in Alberta. Every medicine wheel is unique to its religious philosophy, beliefs, and teachings. So that's really beautiful. Built on mountain land or mound, continuing to come around. Life's a circle, walk the wheel, connect with spirit, learn and heal quite like that one but I, what's interesting is I don't know if you can see this but it's almost like there's a boat in the background in the midst of the forest I quite like that I don't know something about that it gives me a little good chills here we have bones for casting for divination we have the flute uh, for expression. Uh, I think that Kayla was saying she thought this felt uh, maybe Peruvian. Uh, of like a, you do see a lot. I have some, I used to have some amazing Peruvian uh, flute music, but more with the pan pipes, you know, with all the different uh, tones in the pipes. But that's beautiful. We have feathers for restoration, also cleansing and clearing. You know, using a feather fan is amazing. I have a, a piece of blue kyanite uh, that I want to attach some crow feathers to at some point. That gets us to the, I don't know, it seems to me almost like types of uh, people or people of power or that type of thing. And we have the Dreamweaver again. I love that we have, we were talking a little bit, this came up in a reading we did in live chat. We have sort of um, in terms of we have what could be, first I thought it could be a boy just because of the way that the, the hair was cut off, but I'm choosing to see this as a, a female and a male, old and young, Asian, and um, I, I would see this more of African descent, uh, or but it doesn't necessarily have to be, but you have different skin types, different cultures, different ages, different genders, right? But all kind of meeting together in, it, we can dream together, we can weave the world in which we are all more together and inclusive and connected because we are all connected. I think that's so gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, the trickster was one of the cards that did not resonate with a lot of us just because of the... Um, 
you would have thought in a shamanic deck, or I would have thought that this would have been coyote, uh, but that's, you know, that's of course very North um, or Native American uh, idea of coyote as a trickster, hyena, uh, there's an Egyptian god, I think Anansi that uh, some people had said would be, would have been good here. However, um, we, I think that this does again include the European understanding of the trickster. And so we had the court jesters who were in many ways seen as comical, but then were also often had the ears of kings and were quite powerful. Uh, so there is a lot of deflecting going in the craziness of a, of a jester, um, where in the behind the paint, uh, sometimes you often read a lot, like in Shakespeare plays, are often, often quite sad, but there is certainly the connotation in European literature of the court jester uh, having the ear of the king. Um, and so I think that that, that that allows me to make peace with this card, even though it was my least favorite, uh, because... Um, I think that it does, again, in a, in a deck full of different cultures, I think that, you know, obviously having the European culture interjected is, as well is important. So, um, so yeah, I quite like that. Uh, we do have a little, I, now I, I'm like, okay, all right, yeah, I, I can go with this, <laughs> right? Um, love this card. Here we have the shapeshifter. Uh, beautiful turning into raven energy. This is just, that's just stunning perspective. Gorgeous ancestor cards. Again, I feel like you have uh, different ages. We have definitely have European. We have uh, what appears to be Native American, Indian, as in from India. Uh, definitely African. Uh, just different uh, races, uh, mostly out older, but some of them younger looking as well. Uh, but those that come before us, the ancestors, the wisdom, um, I think that's really, really beautiful. Uh, and I quite like this card. Now, I don't know if this is meant, no, I would say, I don't know if they were meant to be specific people. The old ones left us great legacy of ancient wisdom. Um, once made like you of blood and bone from earth now, but now to spirit flown. Honor who we truly are. Wisdom claimed to take you far. Here we have the shaman. Of course, a shamanic medicine card deck is, you know, needs to have a shaman. I felt like there was a mix here. I love, again, bear showing up because I'm doing a lot of work with bear right now. So I love that. Um, this is a, a, a symbol that's really important to me. So I love to see that on there. Again, we like to see if we're going to be using something in our practice. It's great to see those things that really resonate with us. Um, this does feel, uh, I felt like my sister-in-law is Mongolian, and so I felt like you could see some Mongolian influences there as well. Uh, let's just see what this says in the revealed section. Believed to have originated from the Tung Tungusic Evanki language of North Asia, the world word shaman refers to, re describes one who knows and is consumed by the fires of inspiration. The term was initially associated with the ancient religions of the Turks and the Mongolians. Ah. One point to Kelly, but is now used as an umbrella term applied to medicine peoples of Australia, Africa, the Americas, and Europe. Shamans focus on soul healing individually as well as a tribe and are concerned with coexistence and the relationships between the community and its surrounding. So there you go. Beautiful. And then we get into those sort of things that you do, I think, of those things of, of, be, of doing set of being. Uh, we have prayer uh, with the keyword of hope. We have buried in earth for transference. This freaks me out. I'm not going to lie. I've not really ever heard of that experience of, an, you know, you know, burying yourself with a straw so that you can breathe, so that you can have this amazing uh, transference experience. Um, I'm very claustrophobic uh, to a, a degree in which it probably has something to do with past life issues. <laughs> um, and I certainly could not see myself doing that. But uh, so that gives, if this card gives me the heebie-jeebies, I will have to do some work with this one. Uh, here we have soul retrieval. Of course, the keyword reclamation here. 
Oh, I love these cards. Just the, 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 the paint uh, style, the richness of color are just all up my alley. Vision Quest to Seek. The Journey, so of course the heart of the, uh, of Matt, much, much of people would think of the heart of, of, of the shaman's work is in journeying. So of course to have a journey card I think is, you know, beyond necessary. And I love the, of the, so that was kind of what you're doing. Uh, these are places to go to, right? So you go to the cave uh, for retreat. I, you go to the cave for many reasons. Um, absolutely beautiful. You go to the altar to honor and to do your work and there are lots of things that you go to the altar for. Uh, you go to the lodge when you seek counsel. And you go to sacred sites for that focus and that purpose. This is a stunning card. Absolutely. When you think of all of those hinges that are just kind of made to light up in that when you when the sun you know what probably one time a year comes to that exact point uh in which it was created to bring the the henge to life i mean it's just so powerful you kind of would have thought there would have been a card like with the uh pictures on the ground uh that you have all over that would have been uh, i could see that being a really great card in here as well um, so then we get to the different kind of, you know, pe creatures and beings, being, I would say beings. So we have the, the different beings that we have uh, as part of our, our earth. So we have plant medicine or for, for many people who work with plant spirits, I think this would be a wonderful card for that, for truth. We have birds, so we have, of course, uh, creatures or beings of the sky for freedom. We have sea creatures uh, for immersion as the key word. We have insects for support. We have four-legged beings with uh, the keyword of endurance. We have stone people for knowing. We have tree people for sustenance. And then we get to sort of those states, I think, of, of the human of cycle, although I would say with props with any of the beings, right? That moment of conception, that idea of birth and renewal, the moment of death and transmigration, um, and so then moving into the next phase, that is something that all beings, of course, would work through. And then sort of, I think, enveloping everything is the idea of the great mystery and the understanding of trust, uh, trusting in the greater mystery that abounds. This card, to me, I could almost leave this out because I feel as if all of the other cards speak to the great mystery and I, I don't know image wise I'm not so sure about let's take a look at the, this is the last one let's take a look at the guidebook great mystery in in capital letters is universal energy that permeates throughout all things it is the beginning and the end it is present in all things the great mystery is also referred to as creator it is everything come together as one so this is the idea of source of spirit of creator um, of the great mystery depending on how how you might phrase that so that's really beautiful and i think that would be important i don't know that i, I would necessarily put a lion there but maybe something a little more um, showings of the web would have been would have been wonderful <laughs> um, but anyways that uh, there we have that so I think this is a absolutely stunning beautiful amazing deck uh, I'm really excited to work with it uh, I, I have right now a beautiful tri trifecta that really works with my understanding, my kind of my spiritual path, which is the, with the Weaver's Oracle, the Davis of Creation, the Shaman's Oracle, and I feel like this is number four. Uh, it's the fourth leg of that particular oracle um, set that I think is going to be actually quite important to me. So this excites me a lot. So let's just pull a couple cards. It does tend to want to bend a little bit so you get that kind of clicking uh, that happens. You know, it's a larger card. Uh, it is quite large. It's the size of all the other Blue Angel decks I have. I did check that, so it's that standard Blue Angel size. Um, what size exactly that is. 
so that would be about a little over three and a half so maybe a three and three quarters by five and a half so that's the size that you have there pretty again it's the size of all blue angel oracle decks but whereas most have borders taking up the images and sometimes multiple borders this does not and so you are left with um just all beautiful image so let's so we have the understanding of south and abundance and healing that we saw came with the concept of south we have the trickster of course whatever you say a card is like not your favorite it's going to follow you and then it becomes your favorite this happened to me with the bohemian gothic um tarot there is one card in there the seven of wands that has a creepy demon guy in it i thought that's the only one that's like Ugh. but it, he became my bff i absolutely love that card now i'm sure i'm going to end up loving this trickster card so and then we have the plant and medicine people the idea of truth so abundance challenge and truth now of course i didn't pick this for any good reason i would probably do it this way and pull a card uh, for the upper world the middle world you could kind of do it this way just to get things to fit but i would do the upper world the middle world and the lower world because then you have that sort of context um, or you could do past present and future or you could just pull a card at the end of another reading that you're doing um, and so I definitely see myself using this in my ancestor reading my web reading even my reading uh, oracle painting reading that I do because it's very you can just see in color tones uh, it's just very uh, similar color richness to the um, palette that I, uh, that I most use and paint with. So I just feel like there's a lot of ways in which I'm going to be using this wonderful, wonderful deck. So I'm going to actually set about uh, edging this and I will come back and show you that briefly before I end this because people always do want to know that. Okay, so I finished edging the deck and you can see I did it kind of based off of either the color, overall color of the card or sometimes that bottom bar, just depending on what it felt like. Now, I only have a few decks that I've done this multi-pattern like this. And the reason I wanted to do this one is because they're all my sort of uh, main set of earth-based, spirit, my spiritual path-based decks, such as the Weaver's Oracle, the um, Shaman's Oracle and the Deva of Creation. Uh, and so because I consider this sort of of the same vein, um, I wanted this to have that same, same look. Not using the same colors, but that same look because these are all decks that I see working together in some way or another and so that's why I wanted to do it in that fashion. So there you have it. I used uh, Tombow markers. These are water-based. If you get this wet, those will come off. I don't get my decks wet. I have, like I said, the, this all three of these have been done with the Tombow markers. Uh, I have shuffled these. I use these for client readings as well as readings for myself. So they have been well used. I haven't had any issue with the Tombows. Uh, I tend to generally use pigment based colors such as Winsor Newton um, pigment markers. However, I have a lot of colors. So when I'm just edging a single deck, I tend to, and those are pigment based, whereas this is uh, water, water based marker. So certainly if you got this wet, that, you know, but again, if I am getting my deck wet, I probably have a bigger problem than the edging. So, <laughs> so I haven't had any issue using these. Um, and so that's what I used. And I just wanted to show you that before I wrapped up this look at the shamanic medicine <laughs> oracle cards by Blue Angel, which are available in the U.S. Uh, on Amazon now.